Back in May of 2011, I did a rant video on the band Design the Skyline and their demo, Surrounded by Silence. And at the time, I thought that was the worst song ever made and the worst band ever. My opinion has changed on them significantly since then. Do I think they're the worst band ever? No, not anymore. I've, I've heard significantly worse now. But, at the same time, it has not changed at all because I do think they are the worst band signed to a label right now. Like, to, to a professional label. Like, I hate Blow the Dance Floor more than I hate Design the Skyline. And I hate them for completely different reasons, of course, than I hate Design the Skyline. You know, their their song, Surrounded by Science, sounds like shit, but Blow the Dance Floor sounds like a completely different kind of shit. The same thing goes for their album, which they're... They're fans. Yeah, I'm, I was surprised they had fans too, actually, but they told me, listen to their album, listen to their album. Oh, their album's actually pretty good. Oh, listen to it. It's it's actually really good. It's not like, it's way better than their Surrounded by Silence. And so, you know what? I did. I went and listened to their entire album, and I'm going to give you my opinion on that here in just a second. But first, let me get a few things off my chest about that rant video. I've been getting a lot of comments from people who like anal cunts telling me that Seth Putnam will shit on my head or something like that, or how how dare I, I classify Seth Putnam in the same field as Design the Skyline. Okay, look, at the time I made that, I knew anal cunt was an intentionally bad band. I made a video on Broken Side before that. That was long since removed from YouTube. Thanks a lot, Suburban Noise. You guys don't understand fair use at all, do you? But I said in that video, Anal Cunt is intentionally bad. I said, Design of Skyline sounds worse than a band who is trying to sound the worst. That's what makes that comment a little, a little more extreme. Seth Putnam failed to be the worst because these guys outclassed him. And uh, by the way, rest in peace, Seth Putnam. You you were actually a really funny guy. And but what I'm saying about this is Anal Cunt doesn't suck in the same way Design of Skyline sucks. They su oh sure, they sound atrocious, but that's what they're supposed to do. But Seth Putnam always had a bit of his talent shine through in every song he ever did. His and those songs were hilarious. Like, um, I kicked you because you were pregnant. I lit your baby on fire. Or, uh, Harvey Corman is gay. I can't do it very well. <laughs> yeah, Anal Cunt may be intentionally the worst, but Design the Skylines, Friend of My Silence, is professionally the worst song ever put to any studio, is what I'm saying here. The next points I'm about to make are completely aesthetic, but what is up with Screamo post-hardcore bands and having the in the middle of their names anyway? Like, I can name a couple off the top of my head. Um, of course, Design the Skyline. What the hell is a skyline anyway, and how do you design it? Escape the fate. How exactly do you escape fate when it's a preordained kind of thing? It's it's not something you can actually get away from. It's going to happen inevitably. Bless the fall. Bless the, uh, the fall? Are you talking about autumn? Or does someone just trip over the shoelace and a priest walk by going, God bless your broken nose or something like that? Or pierce the veil. What is this, an Iranian assassination attempt on a woman? Can someone please explain the necessary of this? Or the, the point of having these band names like this? It just... These, again, are aesthetic, and you don't have to take them seriously, but these have just always bothered me for a minor reason, actually. I just I, I just don't get them. You know, they all sound pretentious as hell to me, and the fact they have the, in the case of singular, like, design THE skyline, as in, it's the only skyline that needs to be designed. I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I really don't get it. Again, again, there are aesthetic points, and you can like whatever you like, but whenever I hear these sort of bands, I just... I, I just... I imagine their lead singer, and 100% of the time I'm always right, their lead singer is always some prissy skinny guy, usually covered from head to toe in tattoos, usually with sleeves and stuff, and he sounds like a really, really, oh, how do I, how do I explain this again, um, priss. Yeah, um, because when I think of badass and stuff, you know, whenever someone wants to go, oh, I'm hardcore, I don't think of guys who have sleeves full of tattoos that are like Hello Kitty and, and Pac-Man and... Uh, Final Fantasy and stuff. I mean, you can have as tattoos if you like, and maybe, you, maybe you're like uh, Corpse Grind, and you're a badass, and you like World of Warcraft. Y you know, the point I'm making is this. Um, if you want to portray yourself as a badass, you better be at least so someone like Corpse Grinder, who's a freaking monster out there. Or someone who's, you know, got a beard, bitchin' hair, and a bitchin' coat to match. You see, because when I think of badass, I don't think of someone with snake bites, uh, freaking hockey puck in their ears, and 
16 year old girl hair and 16 year old girls in general I don't think of badass when I think of those I don't care how many times anime wants to portray a 16 year old girl as a badass I will not buy it and I know that again there's a really long tire that makes absolutely no sense and doesn't really have anything to do with design the skyline outside of the fact that it's their band name that I have an arbitrary point with like does it really doesn't really matter I mean Blackmore's night is just Richie Blackmore and his wife's last names put together for a whole band I mean yeah, it's not much better, but at least it's Richie Blackmore, and he's freaking awesome. But what I'm saying about this is, you know, you know, I made that video back in 2011 and, and stuff. This is, well, it's almost 2013 now, at the time I was making this video, which I hope you people can read the date in case it's four years later, and you're still bitching about this, by the way. But what I'm saying is this. I'm trying to clear a few skeletons out of my closet and get on with this before I start college in spring. So... I decided to go back to design the skyline from this. Usually I wouldn't have bothered. In fact, I even considered deleting that rant video because I knew it wasn't one of my best. I made the video purely out of anger and it's it's kind of embarrassing me to go look at nowadays, actually. But I figured I would go back and I would listen to their album just to give it a chance because who knows, maybe they can impress me. That being said, what do I think of their album? I didn't like it. Who's shocked? Is anyone shocked here that I did not like Design the Skyline's first album called Nevea? What a pretentious name anyway. Nevea. It's just heaven spelled backwards. You go in the Alucard Dracula route of things. Yeah, that's that's really freaking genius, isn't it? Let me get on with this and I'll explain to you every initial problem that I have with each individual song as we get to it. So let's start with their first song, Crystal Swords Kill the Hordes. <laughs> The song is boring. Like I got bored about a, 30 seconds into it already. That's a, that's a, must be a new record for me because songs are really really short. But I don't have an immense hatred for it. Like I mean, okay, I have an immense hatred for the song "Surrounded by Silence," and I have an even more immense hatred for the song "Rise and Shine" by Blood on the Dance Floor. But let's face it here, this song is just boring. Like I don't like it. And I certainly don't have anything good to say about it. Like, I hate the song, but I don't hate it as much as those other songs. So let's go to the next one. I hate Screamo. Anyone surprised by that statement? I'm a power metal guy, but and I hate Screamo. Let me tell you why. I, I hate guys like Oliver Sykes who sound like they just yell really loudly and they gargle gravel to get that raspy sounding voice they got. It sounds like shit, it, it really does. There is no talent whatsoever in yelling extremely loudly into a microphone. All you do is damage your vocal cords. Oliver Sykes, look, if you haven't damaged vocal cords beyond repair already, do yourself a favor, take some freaking singing lessons. And I mean, take some real singing lessons. I don't mean go to someone like Andy Six and say, hey Andy, can you show me how to sing? No, I mean, I mean, get a real instructor. And the reason I bring this up is because this song is just like an Ollie Sykes song. It sounds like shit. They are doing the exact same vocals he is doing. Oh, by the way, I expect a lot of bitching about the vocals because that's, that's the number one problem with this entire band. Their vocalists are terrible. But if I have something to say about Reality Away, I, I think the chorus line is a little under okay. Like... They only do it twice, but it can be okay if, like, the second or third listen if you want to suffer through it that far. No, it's not Conan the Destroyer, but I watched the movie three times and listened to this album once again. The only good part about the song is that it reminded me of, of, of Into Eternity in the beginning of it. It sounds like an Into Eternity riff at the beginning. And oh boy, is that as close as these vocals are going to get to the awesomeness that is Stu Block. Because these guys, when they, whenever they first chime in, they're, they ruin the whole song. Like, the song was like, yeah, this is okay so far. All of a sudden, bleh, dead. Here's yes, I'm killed. I, I stick, a fork in that, stick a fork in this song, it's done. Cybernetic Straw Flower. Cybernetic. What, what kind of title is Cybernetic Straw Flower? What does it mean? And what is a cybernetic straw flower anyway? Well, besides some bizarre title, guess what? This song sucks. 
it's probably the worst one so far in the entire album, actually. The only part worth a damn is Matt Ryan's solo, because he is surprisingly a talented guitarist. And I'm being totally serious when I say this here. Matt Ryan is actually a really damn good guitarist. Check it out, seriously. <laughs> that, why the hell was he in this band? Break free from your life. The single. I said it before and I'll say it again. I hate the vocalists. They don't do a thing different. Like, I'm serious here. Design the Skyline fans, be, be real with me for a second here. Even if you like it, okay? Name me one thing they do differently than a guy like, than, a, than anyone from Red Jumpsuit Apparatus or any other previously mentioned bands in, that I've talked about in this video. Like, I'm serious here. Like, tell me, what do these vocalists do differently? What makes them more distinctive, more recognizable than these guys? Because honestly, I couldn't tell you. Seeing as I've been bitching with their vocals the entire time of this video, um, an instrumental seemed like just what the doctor ordered, right? Right? It's okay. Like, the instrumental is a little boring, but it's an okay instrumental. Like, I have heard worse, but I've heard way better. My only issue with it is that it's not really that, that good. It's not really all that technical. It's not really... It's just bland, really. I mean, I mean, okay, it's the best song in the album so far. If only because I have to hear their shitty ass vocalist, but yeah, it's just bland. I like to imagine the meeting for this song. Seriously, it's fun. I think somewhere along the road, one of the band members turned to somebody else in the band and said, Let's play loud. And then they started, he said, louder! And then when they get going, louder! I'm talking to the vocalists again. Who's surprised? Nobody. Tell you that's who. But how do you tell a good death metal vocalist from a bad one? It's very easy. A good death metal vocalist can enunciate and put melody to the to lyrics they're actually singing. Okay? For example of this. Goes in the song Timeless Winter by Into Eternity for examples on how to do death metal vocals properly, as done by the awesomeness that is Stu Block. Or goes into Bleak from Opeth for another example. See how those guys do it. And then come back to this song and see how not to do it right. You know, how the death metal vocalist does a lot of pauses after lyrics so I can catch my breath. I can't do death metal vocals to save my life, but you know what? I'm not trying to do death metal vocals here. It's just an example here. They stop to catch their breath every few seconds here, and it's obviously amateur hour. They have no rhythm, and on top of that, I can't understand a word they were saying. I found this video about the song that was a lyric video, and honestly, I couldn't tell that they were actually singing those lyrics. It, it sounded... It was a mess. It really was a mess. This is the worst song so far on the entire album. It's loud, obnoxious, and it's just poorly done. Did I suddenly start listening to a techno album or something? Okay, you know what? I am sick of these bands who have an identity crisis here. Listen to me, you emo pop tards. Let me tell you something here. If you want to play pseudo-hardcore chug-chug stuff, then play that shit. I don't have to like it, but you guys have an audience somewhere there. I mean, you know what? Just play that shit. But if you want to play techno, then play techno. I'm listening to you, Attack Attack, here. You guys are the worst example of that. Techno interludes at the very end of your songs? What the hell are you doing here? Play your chug-chug shit and leave techno alone. I don't care if you want to be hardcore but want to be playing in dance clubs, too. It ain't gonna work like that. Ask Broken Side. Under the Blood Driven Moon. Cool name for a song. That's about as most good things I'm gonna say about it. Because this song is the worst song on the entire album. And considering how much I bitch about the entire album thus far, that is saying a lot. It's an amalgam of everything wrong with it, actually. It wasn't this entire album. 
Listen to this song and you will hear everything wrong with it. Incomprehensible, shitty ass screaming and death vocals that don't make any sense, mixed with bland guitar riffs that are so far beneath a shredder like Matt Ryan's ability, it's actually kind of embarrassing. I'm still shocked he had, he had the balls to put out something like this. It's just everything wrong with him. But the, the one thing I can say about it that's kind of a good thing, but at the same time, the worst thing about the song, it's this. They actually tried showing some range in their vocals. It ends very, very poorly. It's not like they tried to do a rap song with death vocals. <laughs> and what was that a dumb idea? It's another instrumental, and it's the last song in the album. Thank God, because I can't take any more of this. I said about the other instrumentalists, it has the exact same problems. It's just bland. And really, I could, I figured out, listening to it, what was actually wrong with the other song as well. It's this. They don't really go anywhere. Like, the instruments are like, they're nice, they're very moody, they're mellow, they're smooth, they're very easy to take, it's just, they don't go anywhere, there's no build-up, there's, it's just like, it's just one big flat line, you know, it doesn't really, doesn't really have any jumps or anything. I don't know, I don't really have examples off my head of how to do an instrumental song properly, but, I'm certain somebody else has, but it's very moody, very slow, it's, it's definitely way better than the other shit they have on their album. So yeah. That's my thoughts on their entire album. Now, when is this video going to stop the detractors that I've gotten on my video way back in 2011? No. In fact, I'm pretty certain if they actually come to this video, and I'm hoping they will, they're gonna get a little more pissy to saying, yeah, fuck you, that album was awesome, you still have, you just have shitty taste in music, yeah. Okay, okay, whatever, okay. You can like this if you want. I never said anybody can't like this on the skyline. I just said that if you like it, you must be deaf. And I still hold that opinion. If you like Surrounded by Silence, you must be deaf to me because you have a hearing ability that I just simply cannot understand. And that's good, you know? We all have our different tastes in music, and in the end, it makes the world go round. So if you like this album, then by all means, you like it. But personally, I think Nevea needs to go straight to hell. <laughs> I usually do these, but I figured it'd be a good for an occasion, especially like this right now, because uh, I found out recently through a fan of mine on my Facebook page that a, another fan of mine, name of Jonathan Hall, was recently diagnosed with, with pancreatic cancer. So hey, uh, Jonathan, if you're seeing this, and I really hope you are, um, get well soon, buddy, and don't give up. I really wish I could tell you some more advice on what to do with this, but I really don't have a whole lot of experience with it. But I can say eat a lot of broccoli and eat a lot of cauliflower because that stuff is supposed to be good for cancer. And so John, then Jonathan, um, I'm pulling for you. I'm pretty certain your friends and family are pulling for you. And if anyone who's a fan of mine sees this video, we're pulling us. We're pulling for you. So um, you better get well soon, buddy. Because I, I don't, I don't know you personally, but I can safely say this: um, like dedicated fans are something I really need. And be sure to stick around with us sometime. Okay. Take care, buddy.